Hello friends. So today I just wanted to do a little reading wrap up for the year 2022 so that I feel like we can put everything behind and move on and look forward to the reading year of 2023. This isn't really going to be like a stats heavy video or anything kind of like usual part of my plan for the new year which we'll go over in a separate video is just to be more lax with my reading and not take it so seriously. So today we're just going to go over some broad ideas of what the year looked like last year and my thoughts about them and how how it made me feel reading the way that I did last year. So I'm just looking at StoryGraph for the information that I'm going over with you guys today and we'll kind of wrap things up and compare to what I set out to do last year. So for 2022, I ended up reading 157 books, which says about 50,900 and 58 pages. This definitely included audiobook reading and physical reading. I don't have the statistics to tell you, but if I had to guess off the top of my head, it would be real split down the middle, probably half audiobooks and half physical books. So it's kind of funny because at the beginning of the year, I think I set out to read like 75 books and then I more than doubled that. So that's not like, oh, yay, me, good, I'm glad. That means, no, something was wrong. You spent a little bit too much time reading. So that's kind of what triggers my brain there is I didn't accomplish my goal of 75 books because I went way, way, way too far off the deep end. I like when it does the pie charts because it says, I reflected on ideas, felt all the feels, and went to dark places. And that definitely represents a lot of the books that I read last year. Very impactful, heavy, heavy thematic books with dark themes and books that just destroy your soul. I wanted to feel all the feels in a dark way last year. I started off the year reading a moderate amount of books, still a lot, and then it kind of increased and then dropped way off at the end of the year when you guys know I was going through recovery where I couldn't read if I wanted to. The majority of the books that I read last year were literary fiction and contemporary. There's a really fine line between those sometimes, so I don't know how StoryGraph categorizes those, but definitely the most of what I read was literary fiction or contemporary. But then the next highest category was fantasy, which seems skewed because I don't feel like I read that much fantasy last year. And then we have LGBTQIA plus and historical. So that feels pretty right because I love literary fiction, I love historical fiction, and I love fantasy. So this is definitely not what I necessarily set out to do last year. I really wanted to be able to read all of the sci-fi and fantasy books that had been on my mind or that I had been seeing everywhere. I just couldn't get in the mood to read those books for some reason. And so I knew that if I forced myself, I wouldn't enjoy them anyways. I probably did try to force myself a time or two and then ended up just putting it down. Plus, I also don't think it's a bad thing to have variety and have change and to allow myself to find new genres. And sometimes when you're trying to get to know your tastes in a new area, you really have to delve in and explore what you do or don't like to figure out like where to go in the future. So I think that is the majority of what I did in 2022 is figure out a lot of the fiction, contemporary, literary, historical, and decide what things I do and don't like. I had to do a lot of trial and error, a lot of just trying out books because they were prize winners or books that I saw everyone reading on booktube in like the literary fiction side of booktube and seeing which ones I did and didn't like. I don't regret that my reading year looked like this, but I do feel like deep within a change coming for 2023, which I said we'll talk about later. Yeah, it was a good year. It was a really good reading year in such a different way than normal that I don't know how to describe it. I think when it comes to reading the different genres, it's like reading literary fiction allowed me to like heal and it was so cathartic to live through so many different characters, all these lives and experiences that different people have had that obviously the author was drawing from to feel those emotions because of course you can do that within sci-fi and fantasy, but not to the same extent because you have a lot of the rest of the book in sci-fi and fantasy that's 
based on the plot and world building and magic or whatever you may have. Whereas in a literary fiction book, it is mostly just based on those things. And so you get the opportunity to do that much more in literary fiction versus sci-fi and fantasy. And there's pros and cons to both genres and both sides of that. So it was really a year to lean into that. And I'm always going to keep that with me. I'm always going to read literary fiction, but I definitely am ready for just some fun because the books I read were not fun. My most read authors last year, A Quickie and Mezzi, I read six of their books in 2022. I don't know how many books they have. I think I had only read one previously, but they are definitely a standout author for me last year. Completely fell in love with them, with their writing, with their mind. It's brilliant. It's beautiful. I'm obsessed. I can't wait for whatever they publish next. I will surely be reading it. So they come in at number one with six books. Then there's quite a few authors that I read three books from last year that I really enjoyed as well. Sally Rooney. I became a Sally Rooney fangirl last year. Normal people completely stole my heart and I enjoyed conversations with friends and Beautiful World Where Are You stole my heart as well. So I am forever a Sally Rooney fangirl at this point. Similar to Jonathan Franzen, I read three of his books last year as well. And this was very unexpected because I really hadn't heard of him much before. And I didn't know that I would love these historical or just like family drama saga type of stories. So I had the best time. Reading Jonathan Franzen for me is just so like soothing and comforting that every time I know I'm gonna listen to one of his books, it just is like this feeling of comfort washes over me. So I'm really looking forward to reading more by him. Hopefully he has a sequel coming out this year to Crossroads, I think maybe. I read Three Things by Sylvia Plath, Three Things by Joan Didion, and Three Things by Eve Babbitts. So they all sort of tied because I had the best time exploring their work for the first time this year. I don't think I had previously read from any of those before this year, and they are all very different in their own way. But boy, do they have beautiful work. They all bring something so unique and sometimes touching upon the same ideas or topics in different ways. And so I will absolutely be exploring the three of them again in the future. Okay, and then a couple more authors tied for two books. I read two books by Otessa Moshfag, two books by Hanya Yanagihara, two books by Tiffany McDaniel, and two books by Haruki Murakami. So I really enjoyed the majority of those books. You guys know I didn't love my year rest and relaxation, but all four of those authors are certainly authors that I would read from again in the future. And I had a lot of fun checking out their books this year. According to Storygraph, I only read 18% nonfiction and the rest 82% was fiction, which is much lower than I thought because I really feel like I read a lot of nonfiction last year, but I guess that's still 29 books. So 29 books is a lot of nonfiction books to read. That's you know, more than one nonfiction book a month if you average it out. So I would say that that's pretty good. The majority of the books that I read were less than 300 pages. So 48%, 41% were between 300 and 500 pages and only 11% were over 500 pages. So I definitely went from reading a lot of huge, massive fantasy books to a lot of shorter literary fiction books. And when we look at my mood for the year, Reflective was the largest mood followed by emotional, dark, and challenging. So you can see I don't really read too many happy things as of last year. So those are just the most like the graphs and things that we went over. I don't want to make this video too long because I know a lot of people find statistics videos boring, but reflecting on last year, I know that I really have to work on some things. It's very obvious that I had some things to work on and I know that going forward into next year, it will bring a little bit more balance into my life and into my reading life. And I'm really excited to see what that looks like and sort of having some time off from booktube at the end of the year for a couple of months gave me the freedom to stop watching booktube, stop caring and seeing what everyone else was reading and talking about and stop putting pressure on myself to read certain things. It allowed me to pick up things from new genres like romance even and enjoy it. And so I'm really hoping to carry a lot of that into 2023 with me to just allow me 
to pick up things that I'm genuinely interested in, stop listening to so much of the noise and the chatter about what everyone else wants to read and what everyone else is caring about, to try to make for the best reading year possible. I finished two things so far this year in January and I'm working on another very big fantasy book right now. So it's already turning out to be a pretty good reading month for me. But yeah, I don't wanna take away from anybody who does read as many books as me or probably even more books than me because whatever is your coping mechanism or your way of dealing with life is fine. I just know for me, it was reading too much. It was reading even when I didn't want to read. It was not allowing any room for any other hobbies in my life. And once I got rid of that pressure, it allowed so many other joyous things to come into my life, even if that means just sitting down and watching a TV show for once that everybody's been talking about. Because when you read 150 books a year, there's basically no time for TV unless you also don't have a full-time job too. So I'm just really looking forward to next year and seeing how my life and reading will change overall. So how did your reading year look in 2022? I would love to chat with you guys about it in the comments below. And like I said, I'll link my favorites and least favorites of the year down below so you guys can check out my standout things of the year. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.